Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2017 California Russell Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Jimmy Aguirre. His presenter is class of 2014 Hall of Famer and former Clovis High head wrestling coach, Mr. Rod Balch. At Clovis High School, Jimmy Aguirre was the fourth wrestler in history to win the CIF state championships three times from 1989 through 1991, defeating two state champions. Jimmy led his team as captain to back-to-back -back state championships in 1990 and 1991. Jim was a four-time member of the California Junior National Team. He placed first at the high school nationals in 1991, second at the Junior World Team Trials in 1990, and second in the Esquire Nationals in 1992 and 1993. Jimmy then went on to Stanford University, where he was a Pac-10 champion, two-time team captain, and three-time NC2A Division I qualifier. In 1993, he was selected Outstanding Wrestler at the Pac-10 Conference Tournament. And once again, please note, Jim and his family have traveled all the way from Rwanda, Africa, to be here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2017 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Jimmy Aguirre. Thank you to the Hall of Fame committee. Thank you to my family, many of whom are here tonight. Uh, it's an incredible honor. Thank you to my coaches, especially my uncle and fellow honoree tonight, Rick Rio Frio. My, my presenter and fellow Hall of Famer, Rod Balch, and, and my, uh, my college coach and also a fellow Hall of Famer, Chris Horpel. Um, and also a special thanks to my teammates. Now, wrestling is often thought of as, as an individual sport, but no one who's ever accomplished anything in this sport has done it alone. And in my case, uh, my teammates and coaches, they pushed me harder than I ever thought possible and they also made this crazy, intense sport a lot of fun. So I'm especially thankful for this honor tonight because this whole Hall of Fame process, from when Lynn Dyke first reached out to the thousands of emails he sent since then, mostly telling us to wear something nice and, and not dress, not, not dress like a wrestler. <laughs> this whole process has reminded me that I have a lot to be proud of and a lot to be thankful for. Because, uh, honestly, most of the time when I think about my wrestling career, uh, what I think of is the emotion that comes to me first is actually one of disappointment. Because what I focus on, I don't focus on state or national titles. What I focus on are the losses. Those are the things that come to mind. Uh, when a work colleague or friend uh, approached me in my faraway world that I, that I live and work and asked me, they find out that I wrestled and they ask me how I did, what I usually say is, nah, not as well as I should have. And, and that's because I f think about those losses. Um, I think about losing my junior year in the junior national team or world team trials, wrestling in the finals two out of three against national team member and now I think Cal State Bakersfield coach Mike Mena, beating him 14 to one the first time, and then losing two one-point matches that last one with the last second takedown, a last second gut wrench, and I still hit the wall when I think about that match. And uh, thinking about the, uh, well, my, my, in college, my freshman year, so beating one of my heroes, Marco Sanchez, in the, in the Pac-10 finals is one of my, my wrestling highlights. Two weeks later, losing the first match in the NCAA tournament with Dave Schultz in my corner, it's one of my all-time lows. And I, th I don't think I'm alone in that. I think when you think about losses, I think uh, many of us do. I think many of you do when you think about your career. I like to think that Dan Gable himself thinks more about that loss in the 1970 NCAA final, Larry Owings, than the 181 straight wins before that. Uh, and, and the fact that I can remember each and every loss so vividly, so... Uh, um, 
you know, so many years after, in my advanced age, uh, the fact that I can remember, remember them specifically is a testament that there weren't that many of them to remember. Uh, and, and I'm thankful for that. But, you know, that's, that's the nature of our sport, I think. Um, you know, we share in the wins with our teammates, our coaches, our family. But the losses, the losses are personal. I mean, I was on that mat. Uh, only me. And I was the one that lost. And so you take it with you. And it's so personal. Um, and the burden of being a good wrestler, the burden of being a great wrestler, is that you think you should win every single match out there. And in my case, I felt and still feel that I should have won every match I wrestled, with a few, few exceptions. I think the first time I wrestled Robbie Sword, I, I deserved to lose. I said, no. The at Freestyle Nationals, when Tom Brands threw me all over the mat, and USA Wrestling captured it, and it was in the magazine the next week, I deserved to lose. Um, <laughs> but you see, I was, and I, and, I, and I still am, disappointed about my wrestling career, because I always thought I could have done better. And, uh, and that belief came from my supportive family. I started wrestling because my cousin wrestled, and my uncle was always supportive, even though I wrestled for a rival high school. Uh, that belief came from my coaches and teammates. Recently, I had my, my VHS tapes, wrestling tapes, converted to DVDs and, and uh, watched a couple matches. And uh, the joy of victory came back not from watching the matches themselves, but from hearing my coaches and teammates and family cheering and how excited they got from the matches. Uh, and, and that belief comes from my faith, you know, my faith in God and my belief in a, in a, that was created in his perfect image and that... Uh, and that we're called to share his glory to the world. And I, and I still have that belief. Um, the belief drives me today. The belief drives me to be a better father, and to be a better husband, and to be a better representative of the United States to other countries in the world, and to be a better human being. Um, and yes, I'm still often disappointed in my performance, and I'm still often disappointed that I don't always do as well as I should have done. But... Um, but tonight, uh, tonight's one of those reminders, opportunities to pause and to be thankful for what has been accomplished, to be pause for, to be grateful for, for all of you, and to be proud of, proud of the accomplishments that we have behind us. And, and there are other moments like that, uh, attending a parent-teacher conference and hearing that my kids are above all kind is one of those moments. Um, and, and so right now, tonight, I'm not feeling disappointed in my wrestling career. You know? Tonight, I'm proud. Tonight, I'm thankful. And so thank you all, and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mr. Jimmy Aguirre.